Hello 3D printing friends, it's time once again for another Monoprice Mod Mondays on the BB3D channel. For today's mod, we're going to lighten up a little bit. What am I talking about? I'll be back in a moment to explain. I'm Brian, and you are watching BB3D. So today we're going to lighten up a little bit. Now, what do I mean by that exactly? Well, we're going to add some lighting to the Monoprice Maker Select Plus 3D printer. Specifically, we're going to design and build some light fixtures to hold these inexpensive LED panels that I bought on Amazon. What I want is something that will clip to the top of the printer and provide lighting for the print surface. Better lighting means better visibility, which is good if you're remotely monitoring your printer with a webcam or doing time-lapse videos of your prints. Wiring for the project is very simple and doesn't require any soldering. We're going to use a 12 volt power supply that comes with a switch and some 70 millimeter two pin wires to connect the LED panels to the power supply. Well, let's take a closer look at these LED panels. Now the panels are already wired with connectors. The connectors have a red wire and a black wire. Red is positive and black is negative. Now the connectors aren't keyed, which means there's nothing to stop you from plugging them in backwards like that. That's wrong. So make sure when you plug them in that red goes to red and black goes to black. And you'll be good. So here's that 12 volt power adapter. Now that includes an inline switch so you can turn the lights on and off easily. And that terminates in a barrel connector. There's an adapter included so that you can have access to 12 volts and ground. And we can wire our little extension cables in and get the lights hooked up. There's also a peel and stick pad, so you can mount that switch pretty much any place convenient to you on the printer. Now, we're going to need to know how big this LED panel is, so we'll take some actual measurements of it so that we can model it in Tinkercad. We're going to need to draw a diagram of it, so a simple thin rectangular prism should do. We're going to need to know the width of the LED panel, we're going to need to know the depth of the LED panel, and we also need to know the thickness of the LED panel. So let's get our calipers and take some measurements. So width-wise, it comes out to about 59.2 millimeters, so we'll write that value in. Next, we'll measure the depth. That comes out to about 39 and a half millimeters, so we'll write 39.5. And we need to measure the thickness, including the LEDs and the sticky pad. And that comes out to about 3.8 millimeters, so we'll write that in here. For the purposes of modeling this, we can just round these up to the nearest millimeter. So our rounded values will give us uh, about 60 millimeters by 40 millimeters by 4 millimeters thick. All right, well, the next thing that we're gonna to need to do is work on getting measurements of the gantry because this is where we're going to have a, uh, an arm come across to snap one. So the rough diagram of the gantry is this. On the left is the front and at the top is the top. So we're gonna to need to know the thickness of the metal there. So let's take a quick measurement. And that comes out to a about 1.3 millimeters, more or less. So we'll write in 1.3. And we also need to know the distance across the front or across the top. So that's the distance we want. Let's take a quick measurement and see what we get. And that comes out to about 48.7 millimeters, roughly more or less close enough. So we'll write that in. Now that we've got those measurements done, let's get into Tinkercad and design some light fixtures for our printer. Okay, so I've gone ahead and added a couple of things in Tinkercad already. I have a representation of the printer's frame. So there's the top of the frame and then there's the front of it. And that pretty much mirrors the, hang on a second, under, there we go. So that's, 1.35 millimeters thick and 48 millimeters, 48.7 millimeters to the front. And that 
I'm going to group that together and set that color back to gray. There we go. We're going to use that to design an arm that will snap onto the frame and then hold the LED panel out in front of the printer about here. We're also going to design a box that will hold the LED panel. And so let's design that box now. The LED panel with the dimensions rounded up to the nearest millimeter was 60 millimeters by 40 millimeters by four millimeters. So we want a box that's going to be a little bigger than that. First off, we want to be able to have the LED panel sit comfortably inside a, a mounting box or a light fixture. So I want to leave a couple of millimeters around the edge of that. So to do that, I'll need a box that I'm gonna set it to two millimeters in either direction for both sides. So instead of 40 millimeters, 44 millimeters. And instead of 60 millimeters, 64 millimeters. The height, I only need it to be about 10 millimeters. This is going to be a actually a hole that's going to cut a recess out of a larger box and in that recess will sit the LED panel. So I'm gonna move this up here just for a moment to get it out of the way. Let's bring in another box and this one, we're going to add another two millimeters to these dimensions because this is actually going to be the, the box itself. So instead of, sorry, instead of 44 millimeters, we'll do 48 millimeters and instead of 64 millimeters, we will do 68 millimeters. And that gets us a bigger box. And that, I really only need that to be about 15 millimeters thick. So if I take these two boxes and use the alignment tool and align them on their centers and also align them at their tops and then group them, that gets me a nice little cutout in a box where the LED panel can rest. Now, because the LED panel has wires coming off of it, we'll need a small cutout to accommodate those wires. And I think something that's only four millimeters wide will probably work. The height of it doesn't matter. We do need to pull it over here and bring it up off of the build plate about five millimeters because five millimeters is the thickness of this bottom piece here. Let's use our alignment tool and align that on the center of this, and then we'll group that together. And now we have a cutout in the back of this where the wires for the LED panel can go. Now my vision for this is to have this box mounted to the arm that will come out from here by some M3 screws. And one thing that I know about M3 screws is that if you want them recessed, you need about five millimeters of space. Uh, so where that five millimeters comes from is you need, first off, you need a three millimeter high cylinder because the screw head on the M3 screws is three millimeters high. And the screw head itself is about five and a half millimeters in diameter. So I tend to use a six millimeter diameter cut out to accommodate the screw head. And I like those smooth, so I'll bump the number of sides up to 64. That right there, a six millimeter diameter, three millimeter thick cylinder will perfectly accommodate the screw head for an M3 screw. But we also need to accommodate the screw shaft where the threads are. And since an M3 screw is three millimeters in diameter, we need something that's a little bit bigger than that. My experience has showed me that a 3.25 millimeter diameter cylinder will just allow the threads to pass through the hole. So it won't bind, it will generally slide easily through and everything is good. I'm going to align these on their centers, like so. And actually I'm going to adjust this just a little bit. This needs to cut through this part, and this part is five millimeters thick. So I'm going to make the height of that cylinder only five millimeters. 
Now, when I align these, I think I also want to align the tops because we're gonna have the screw going down through this part of the LED panel box. We don't want the screw coming into the box, we want the screw going out of the box. If the screw comes into the box, then you run the risk of the screw shaft shorting out against the traces on the LED panel, and we don't want that. I'm going to group the parts together for the screw head, and we'll zoom in on that just so you can see how that really looks. Oh, and I didn't set the number of sides to 64, so I need to ungroup that. This part needs to have 64 sides instead of 20 because I want it to be nice and smooth. So those are holes, and I will group them back together. And now I have a piece that will cut out a screw hole. There we go. Now I need to align the screw cutout with the box so that it's centered along this axis here. And I want two screws in here because if I only have one, then if you bump the light fixture, it can swivel and we don't really want it to swivel. We want it to stay straight. So I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to move that probably 15 millimeters away. So moving that 15 millimeters away gets a nice spacing on that. And that's good, I like that. So I'm gonna select this and group these pieces. And now what we get are some nice recesses for the screw heads. So the screw will actually fit right down in there and it'll fit flush when we have the, the box screwed to the mounting arm. Before we go much further with this though, I'm going to ungroup all of the pieces that comprise this box. And the reason that I'm going to do that is I want to add a little bit of embellishment to the design. Now, because we used the sizing tools here for the shape of the box, if we tell it that we want a radius cut off of the edges of this, it will do it. And I want a radius of one. And by default, it rounds it. It uses 10 steps to do it, but I want it real angular. So I'm gonna drag that back down to one. And as you can see, it kind of bevels all of the edges around the outside of the box. And that makes it look a little bit nicer. And so now we can take all of these pieces, select them, and group them. And we have a little bit of embellishment to the design, and we have all of the pieces cut out the way we need them. So that takes care of the box for mounting the LED panel. Now we're going to work on the arm that will snap on top of the printer frame to which the LED panels will be mounted. I'm gonna bring a box out, and that's going to form the basis of the mounting arm. I think I want that to be 15 millimeters high, and I'm going to want that to be, I think, 100 millimeters wide, and probably three millimeters thick. That sounds reasonable. I might go a little bit thicker, but I think three sounds good. I'm going to move this over here, and I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit. Not quite that much. So we can see how things are lining up over here. I'm going to bring that down a little bit and over a little bit. Because what I want is I want to have a part that comes down here and then runs underneath about halfway across here. So I'm going to bring another box out. And that one also will be 15 millimeters high. And I think the 20 millimeter width, which is here, is fine. Length is actually kind of the front to back distance. And I think two millimeters is probably fine for that. And we'll bring this up here. Now, this measurement for the frame top is extremely close to being the actual measurement. In fact, that's kind of the measurement that we measured using the calipers. Now, it may vary from printer to printer. They may have slightly different thicknesses of steel. They may have slightly different thicknesses of paint. So we're not going to count on it being exactly, I think, what was it, 1.35 or 1.37 millimeters thick. We're gonna to have to design around that 
uh, around the variances that can occur in this. So I am going to adjust my snap grid to 0.1 millimeters so that as I use the arrow keys to nudge this part down, I can get that more or less lined up with the top of this. But where I want to have some, some wiggle room is on the bottom of this. And so I know this gap as it stands is going to be too large to hold this or to hold this piece against the frame securely. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I know that the plastic will flex a little bit. If I grab a, I don't know, maybe a round roof. Let me bring that out here. I'm going to adjust that a little bit because I need that to be in this orientation. Actually, I need that around another 180 degrees. And it needs to be up on the top of the work plane and it needs to be 15 millimeters high. And from there, we can adjust it to fit more of what we want. I'm gonna switch back to the top view so we can see a little better and get things lined up the way we need. So I want this here. I'm gonna move it over a little bit. That's not bad. I may line these up using the alignment tool. And I think I will nudge those just a smidgen so that that goes right about there. That will, that will pretty much ensure that there's some flex on that. And that'll basically be positive pressure to hold this piece against the top of the frame. Let me group these two together. And now we need to connect them. So I'll get one more box. And I think maybe two millimeters by two millimeters will do what we need. And again, 15 millimeters high. The height on these parts is actually going to translate to the width of the part in real life. We're just building it on its side. That's not quite what I need. I need a little bit more here. Let's go for four. That's better. That spans across both pieces. So I will highlight those and use the alignment tool and align them across the back, which actually they already are, surprisingly. Well, very good. So I can take these and group them together. And we'll zoom to show that entire piece. And you can see how that's gonna fit. Now, what we do need to do is accommodate the fact that we need some screw holes here, 15 millimeters apart. So I'm gonna grab some cylinders. Now, the way I want this to work is I don't want to have to use an M3 nut on the other side of this. I kind of want it to fit flush. I'm intending to use M3 by six screws here. And that's gonna go through two millimeters of plastic here and three millimeters of plastic here. The screw shaft will probably stick out just a smidgen, but it'll be mostly flush and that'll be good enough for my purposes. It won't be sticking way up here. So if you remember, when we designed these screw holes here, we set them 15 millimeters apart. Now the screw shaft on an M3 screw is three millimeters. And so I'm going to set this to three millimeters. And when we print, the actual physical diameter of that hole will, will really be slightly less than three millimeters. And that'll be fine because that'll give us a little bit of plastic for the teeth on the screws, to, or for the threads on the screws to bite into. So I'm gonna take this and duplicate it. Oh, wait, before I do that, I'm going to set my snap grid back to a millimeter. That makes it easier to move these around. So I'm going to duplicate that, and then I will just use the arrow keys and nudge the duplicated part 15 millimeters down. There we go. Now I can take those two pieces and group them together. 
and I am going to look at it from this perspective. I need this rotated over here and here so that we can essentially use these holes to drill the screw holes in this arm. So with that selected, I can select the arm and I'll use the alignment tool to align them centered across here. And now I can bring these over here and I think I want to have the screw holes cut out right about there. That looks good to me. So I will select those and group them. And now we have a couple of parts and I believe those should be ready to print. Now, you can add a little bit of extra styling to these if you have access to Autodesk's Fusion 360 because Tinkercad now includes a feature where you can send an item to Fusion 360. This is not going to be a Fusion 360 tutorial, but I'm telling you that because I have actually gone and done that and I have added a bit of style to the arm and the box. And basically what I did to it was just cut some pieces out, styled it a little bit more. It's got more of a bevel on this part these parts are rounded over nicely. This is rounded over nicely here. And I've added some roundovers on the arm itself. I also added some holes here for zip ties. And you know what? I think I'm gonna add those back in over here. Because what I want to be able to do is use zip ties through here to hold the wires in place so that they're not just flopping around. I would suspect that a hole that is one millimeter by three millimeters will cut out perfectly from here to make a hole for a zip tie. I'm going to need to ungroup this because I want to align that hole up on the center of this. So I'm going to ungroup that piece. And now I can align those two. There we go. And I want one, I want a zip tie hole back here and I also want one more towards the front. So I'm going to duplicate that and I'll just nudge that with the arrow keys and move it up here and that should take care of it. Oh, oh, I forgot a thing. I forgot a thing. Let me add that thing. The thing that I need to add is a, a stop so that this piece won't slide back off the back of the printer and a roof is a good thing to use for that. So let's get this thing rotated up. 90 degrees there. 45 degrees there. Raise it up to the surface of the work plane, make it 15 millimeters tall. That doesn't need to be that big though. It can be five millimeters on each of those sides. And let's switch to the top view and we'll also zoom in on the part so we can get a good look at what we're doing. I'm going to adjust my alignment grid, or my snap grid is what to call it. That should work. And now we can group all of those pieces together again. So we'll get these and these and this and the two zip tie holes. And that should be all of the pieces. Group. There we go. But the pieces here that I've got on the screen, these two, the purple one and the kind of greenish, brownish, whatever color that is, those are the ones that we are actually going to print and mount. Okay, I printed those parts out, and I'm sorry I didn't get a time-lapse video of them, but the time-lapse videos are kind of boring on flat parts like these. Anyway, I wanted to show you a trick for cutting screw threads in plastic. 
You probably already know you can just force a screw into screw holes like the ones we designed in the mounting arm, and that's how I used to do it. It turns out you can use a tap. What's a tap? Well, the tap is a specialized tool designed to cut screw threads. It's easy to do. You just screw the tap in like you would with a screw. I'm using a three millimeter tap to do this since we're using M3 screws. When you're done, you have a threaded hole that perfectly fits an M3 screw. It turns easily with just your fingers. Now, you don't have to use a tap. You can still just force the screws into the holes with the driver and that'll also cut the threads for you. Now go ahead and use whichever method you prefer. I've got the four holes tapped so we can start assembling the light fixtures. We'll gather up the arms and the rectangular fixtures. These actually came out really nice. Well, let's get an M3 by six screw and drop it into one of the recessed screw holes. And you can see that the screw fits flush with the inside of the fixture. Perfect. Well, now that we've got one of the screws in the fixture, let's attach it to the mounting arm. We'll go ahead and screw that in. Then get the second hole lined up, add a screw, and we're good. The screws stick out maybe half a millimeter from the mounting arms, but that's about what was expected. Well, now it's time to add the LED panel. We'll peel the backing from the adhesive and then we'll press the panel into place. And remember to route the power cables through the notch at the back of the fixture. Let's get that pressed in there and we should be good. Perfect. Well now repeat that procedure to assemble the other fixture. The cables I ordered from Amazon didn't arrive in time, so I had to make some. The Amazon cables have female connectors on both ends, so you'll need to cut the connector off of one side and strip the wires about four millimeters. You'll notice this cable is red and blue instead of red and black. The other one that I made is green and black instead of red and black. But that's okay, I'm just going to pretend that the blue wire is black and the green wire is red. Now we're going to get the ends stripped from one side of each cable, and then we're going to twist the ends of the red and the green wires together. and the ends of the black and the blue wires together. Red and green will be positive, while black and blue will be negative. If you're using the Amazon cables, keep red to red and black to black. Well, once we've got this done, we can insert the wires into the screw terminal that comes with the power adapter. It's marked positive and negative, so we'll put our red wires in the positive side and tighten the screw. And then we'll put the black wires in the negative side and tighten that screw. And once we do that, we will have completed wiring the power for the LEDs. Well, okay, now it is time to mount these light fixtures and they just kind of slide on from back to front. There's the left and there's the right. With those mounted, let's go ahead and use a zip tie to keep the connector in place on the arm. And this is the connector that is directly attached to the LED panel. We'll zip tie that down and snip the zip tie off. Then we can attach the power cables. And when we do this, remember to keep red to red and black to black because these connectors are not keyed and you can get them plugged in backwards. But now that that's plugged in and we've got red to red, we'll use a zip tie and keep that connector in place as well. Repeat that for the other side, and then when you're done, it'll be time to neaten the wires up a little bit. So I'm gonna use a zip tie to keep these two power cables together up near the top. And let's get that snipped off. And I think this is a good place to mount the power switch. It's out of the way, but it's still convenient to reach. So we'll stick that in place there. And now that the switch is mounted, we can connect the power cables to the connector there. And we still have some slack in our power cables, so let's gather that up. And we'll zip tie that little bundle together. Snip that zip tie off. And I think for now, let's just tuck these right back here. Maybe later we can get that worked into the spiral cable wrap. 
Well, now that we've got the power adapter plugged in and everything hooked up, let there be light. Awesome. Wow, that ran a lot longer than I anticipated, but that's because we spent a good chunk of time in Tinkercad. And we saw how to design around real-world objects, LED panels, M3 screws, and printer frames to ensure a proper fit. But now that we're done, we have some nice-looking LED lights on the printer, and we even have a switch so we can turn them on or off whenever we want. Well, now we're at that part of the video where I say things like like, subscribe, and share, because those three things really do help the channel. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you didn't, give it a thumbs down, but either way, please leave your thoughts in the comments. If you like the content I'm producing, please consider supporting the channel with a one-time micropayment. You could buy me a coffee or put a little something in the PayPal tip jar. There are links in the description if you want to help out. Well, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do so by clicking the BV3D icon right over here and ring the bell to be notified when I release new videos. Uh, speaking of videos, here's one YouTube thinks you might enjoy. Well, now that I can see what I'm printing, I'm going to go print something cool. You print something cool, too. I'll see you next time.